Who is the most prolific serial killer in modern history? Some would say Dr. Harold Shipman, who may have killed up to 250 people, an unusually high amount even for an NHS GP. But even these numbers are dwarfed by today's subject. In this video, we are going to be looking at a killer responsible for over 1,000 murders across several decades and continents, and who remains free to this day. This video is about the most prolific of all serial killers. This video is about Queen Elizabeth II. The story begins in the early hours of the 3rd of June 1953, back before the invention of colour as you can see from the stock footage that she'll be playing right now. A man on his way home from work doing something pathetic was struck and killed by an automo car. Police were quickly on the scene and discovered the driver was a 25 year old woman who was drunk and did not have a driving licence. It seemed an open and shut case but when the police identified the woman it became an open and shut and then open again case. Scotland Yard was swiftly contacted and officers on the scene were informed it was impossible to arrest the woman identified as the Queen. <laughs> Though you should know that by now. Another car arrived swiftly and left with Her Majesty. No further action was taken and the dead commoner was soon forgotten. This seemed to be an unfortunate one-off for Her Majesty as she went without murdering for several years, until October 1959. The night in question was described thusly in the memoirs of a former royal staff wrangler. The royal family were gathered and Her Majesty, who was quite drunk by this stage, was happily showing off a golden diamond encrusted walking stick she had received from the King of Space. At the height of the merriment, Her Majesty swung the walking stick especially forcefully and struck down a servant who had been standing a touch too close. The poor fellow was likely dead before he hit the floor. This was followed by a flurry of activity, removing the body, cleaning away blood, etc., as is royal standard. Before a replacement servant arrived, and the evening continued as normal. There had been an uncomfortable silence, but then Her Majesty smiled her wry little smile and used the walking stick to attack and kill the new servant. This servant was also replaced. Her Majesty laughed as this servant was swiftly dealt with. At the time she was on her fifth servant, the entire royal family were in hysterics. In total, 16 servants died that night, and I shudder to think how high the number could have been had Her Majesty not had an early start the next day. Her Majesty's 10th Jubilee saw the beginning of a macabre tradition. Ten commoners released into the wilds of the Scottish Highlands, hunted down and killed. Every 10 years, the number of victims is raised by 10, and every 10 years, the Queen hunts down and personally kills each and every one. Given the high level of security and secrecy involved, finding exact details of Her Majesty's slangs can be difficult. However, Her Majesty was definitely, DEFINITELY involved in the JFK assassination. 100% definite. After all, you can't talk about shit like this without the JFK assassination getting involved somewhere along the line. Estimates of Her Majesty's death toll range as high as 1500. The Queen's Guard both respect and fear her, knowing the slightest slip could see them exterminated immediately and without mercy. Given the number of victims involved, I will only be looking at a small sample of cases. Please feel free to do any additional research yourself, though be aware you may be mysteriously murdered. John Bingham, commonly known as Lord Lucan, or Mr Christmas, or the Sandwich King, was suspected of murder and disappeared in 1974-ish. Recent evidence shows he was seen heading towards Buckingham Palace. The diary of a groundskeeper notes that there is an area of the Buckingham Palace garden where they were forbidden to dig by the Queen and that this order came 
the very day after his disappearance. Paris, France, August 1997. Diana, Princess of Wales, left the... Hello? Fantastic Flim Facts, how can I... Oh, I see. How did you know? Really? Everybody? Right. And if I do, you'll tell the sniper to step down? You might. Okay, well that's, um, that'll have to do. Ta-ta! Where was I? Oh yes, Diana, Princess of Wales, died in a tunnel and the Queen was not involved in any way whatsoever. And the Queen was definitely not at the wheel of the mysterious white Citroen. There's no way she would drive a French car. In 2012, Her Majesty appeared alongside Daniel Craig in a short film to mark the opening of the London Olympics. The actor, still clearly shell-shocked by the experience, would describe the event. Originally, we were going to use a look-alike, but Her Majesty insisted. Apparently, she's a very big fan of James Bond and of myself. We were relaxing between takes when she suddenly smiled and said, look how many people this takes, as she gestured to the crew. I agreed, only then she leaned forward and simply said, pick one. I didn't understand what she meant, but thought she perhaps wanted to reward one somehow. So I picked out a runner who had been putting in an especial effort that day. Without a word, Her Majesty pulled out a pearl handle pistol and shot the poor fellow dead. Without hesitation, Her Majesty turned to me and said, Don't you know, I have a real license to kill. It had a real effect on me. I became sullen and withdrawn, even beginning to feel the dream job of being James Bond and earning millions of pounds and travelling the world wasn't worth it. I thought people would see the change and realise something was wrong, but all that happened was people shouting, Cheer up, you miserable prick! Or, Go back to your mansion and fuck your hot wife, you wretched bellend! It reached a stage where I was determined to not play James Bond again, but then I had a message from the Queen saying she was very much looking forward to my next film, and I knew I had no choice. Among the many stories to be found about Her Majesty are her supposed connections to a number of well-known massacres. A royal insider who insisted on remaining anonymous told us, Any town that is a massacre without a clear motive, the Queen is the real perpetrator. Look at the Mandalay Bay shooting in Las Vegas on the 1st of October 2017. To this date, the shooter's motive is officially unknown. However, I have uncovered this image clearly showing that Queen Elizabeth II was in the Mandalay Bay Hotel that night. And Her Majesty's crimes are not limited to murder. But I'm in a hurry, so here's a list of the other atrocities with which he is linked. This weekend, as I type, and maybe when I get around to making this video, it is the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Her Majesty was due to attend several events, but cancelled at the last moment. The official line is this was because of health reasons, but renowned royal expert Sir Gary Caruncle thinks differently. The murder of 70 people is not an easy task, especially for a 96 year old. But Her Majesty is determined to reach this number. People often marvel at Her Majesty's spirit and determination and ask how she keeps herself going at such a large age. The real reason is her lust to kill. Word on the street from usually trustworthy sources is that Her Majesty has purchased a nuclear weapon and keeps it in a secret silo in Buckingham Palace. As the ultimate show of her power, she intends to use it on her hundredth birthday to destroy Hello, fantastic flim facts. I see. So the sniper... Uh... Look, before he does anything I might regret, can I just say 